The water looks nice, but it's the wind the riders will have to worry about today as the Tour de France hits the Brittany coast. Hello, we're in Catfrayel for stage five and what the road book calls a flat finish. But even the flat finishes on this year's Tour are uphill. There's a definite drag up to the line on what should be nonetheless the second sprint stage of this year's race. One more thing for Mark Cavendish to think about in what's been an interesting week for him. Stage one saw him well beaten at the first of the Tour's new super intermediate sprints. Stage two saw him lose a teammate at the first bend on the time trial course and left HTC five seconds short of a stage win. On stage three, he'd sorted his legs and his tactics out for the intermediate sprint, but hadn't reckoned on the commissaires who docked him 10 points for exchanging greetings with Tourusoft. At the finish, things could have been even worse. He had to fight to stay upright on the final corner and finish fifth. But at least his legs were good, or so we thought. Yesterday's intermediate sprint saw Tyler Farrer blow by him, along with a couple of other riders once Cav saw that the big points were gone. Jose Joaquin Rojas is in the green jersey with a total of 82 points. Usoft Farah, Garmin's two-headed sprinting beast, have mopped up nearly 140 points between them, their fourth and fifth. Mark Cavendish is currently 12th on 34 points. Now, the first thing we should say is that the green jersey standings in the first week are a bit of a nonsense, especially this year with uh, so many uphill finishes. And, uh, I mean, looking at the other contenders there are, I, I think Mark Cavendish is, is you know, is pretty well placed. It's going to be morale it's going to be all about, to be honest, because he's just got to keep going at it. They changed the format this year to try and weight it towards the sprinters. But then they also went and changed all the finishes to make them really hard for the sprinters, and today's no exception. Yeah, I mean, it's not flat. It's listed as flat, but it, it, it's not flat at the finish or even on the run-in. It's a really difficult one to actually keep control of. I've done the last few kilometres, and there's a kick at 3K, and probably more importantly, with just 600 metres to go. And if somebody goes for an early one there, that's going to make it really difficult for them to, to keep control of the race. They'll either get swamped or have to time their sprint differently. So tricky one, very tricky. Uh, and even more tricky, not just for the sprinters' teams, um, but for the GC favourites to, to keep an eye on, wind today. Yeah, very, very windy day today. Um, but the thing they have in their favour is its direction. It's a tailwind start today. It turns cross for the middle section of the race just as they get to the coast for a while. But then it turns tailwind again for the finish. That assumes, of course, that it doesn't turn around, which it can on the coast. Now then, let's show you just how exposed today's route is. There's the route map, 164 and a half kilometres setting out from Carré and really up and down all day, although there's only one actual recognised climb on the route. The Côte de Grunuel is at 45 kilometres. The intermediate sprint is at Goudelin after 70. Then the race turns right and the second half of it really, a good 80 kilometres is along the coast. So, as Chris says, it's going to be hard work for the sprinters' teams today. In fact, it's going to be hard work for everybody. Now, there was one incident early on, a blatant piece of headbutting. Mark Cavendish uh, perhaps showing Bradley Wiggins, his uh, alleged future teammate, how to do it. And a lot of punctures out on the road today, plenty of mechanicals. And uh, Mark Cavendish was the victim of one of those two. We saw him changing a wheel, but he is happily back in the bunch. Now, before we join live pictures, let's update you on the general classification. Tourhushoff still has the yellow jersey after that great ride up the Mur de Bretagne yesterday. Cad Evans tried to take it off him, but he won the stage nonetheless. He's one second back. Frank Schleck is up to third at four seconds. David Miller is fourth at eight seconds. Bradley Wiggins moves into sixth place on the same time as that man ahead of him, Andreas Clurden. They're both 10 seconds down. And Brad Sky teammates Geraint Thomas and Ned Val Bursenhagen are another couple of seconds back in seventh and eighth. They're on the same time as Andy Schleck in ninth. Robert Hezink is 17th at 20 seconds. Ivan Basso at a minute 03. Alberto Contador is 41st, still a minute 42 down overall, but now only a minute 30 behind his chief rival, Andy Schleck. One kilometre to go here. The green jersey is the one, two, three, fourth man down the line. Rock has, he wants these points to keep it. I've noted that Cavendish is right in there. Man with the black top to his shoulders is Philippe Gilbert, who can pack a punch as well. That's Gilbert's uh, 
Well, I was going to say, former teammate actually making the move at the moment. Gilbert moving across the line now. They've lost Cavendish here a little bit. He's wandering around. Well, that's Matty Gossar right in front. He's riding alongside the green jersey of Rojas, waiting for the moment. There's Cavendish down to third place. Rojas has got a great lead out here, and Cavendish is just holding. He's waiting just a little bit here. And that's Bonin on the second wheel now. And here comes Mark Cavendish, moved over to the left of the road by Bonin. Oh, dear, he was chopped out of it, too, and he's objected to that. Bonin has wandered off to the other side of the road now. Cavendish is not having that. And quite honestly, he did move a bit, Bonin, there. Well, that was Felu got himself across the line in first place. Uh, inside of the top ah. three was Rojas. Have a look here at the acceleration. The you're, sorry, Paul, you're absolutely right. There is um, the movie star rider on the right. There's Tom Bonin moving across, but in fact, it's Rojas is making the move across the line. Now, look at the move by Felu over on the right-hand side. That's a big acceleration for him. Even big Tom Bonin's rocking and rolling there. And on the line, the lunge gives it to Felu just ahead of Bonin. And no points at all there for Mark Cavendish. He's not he's, happy. He's very disgusted, quite frankly, with all that movement on the road. I think he has a legitimate complaint there against Tom Bonin and probably... Oh, oh a dear crash. me, now oh. this is a nasty crash. And this has only just happened... That looks like a Radio Shack rider is on the floor there. Robert Kessink, one of the leaders of the tour for the for the uh, for Paris, is on number 41. Well, Kessink is there. Kessink is in real pain on the left-hand side of the road. These are those silly little crashes that happen at the back end of the main field. But I have to say, the Radio Shack rider who went down there is looking in uh, it's serious it's difficulty. Brakovic, uh, Paul. It's it's Yanni Brakovic who's down on the road. There looks like he may have hit his head. And it's happened there to the right of our picture, you see, and a nasty fall that. Now it also looks as though Hessink, who crashed out of his last Tour de France with a broken wrist, is also in a little bit of pain. But Brakovic here in his second Tour de France and one of the four riders on Radio Shack they were talking of as a possible win overall. He looks uh, as though he has been quite seriously stunned, but he's, oh, he is conscious, OK. As they continue, he knows they're coming, but can he see them? This is the best part of the course today, is they're out of sight for much of it. They're only short straights, but very shortly, and I think we saw them there, didn't we? They're right there behind them now, and his team, BM Safety, Cadell Evans, bringing on the drive. Bradley Wiggins is being brought up to the front. That means Geraint Thomas is there, Ben Swift will be there. They're going to have a go today. Peter Vellitz is the rider on the front for HTC High Road, followed by Tony Martin, two riders with big firepower. They're working for their man, Mark Cavendish, this afternoon. Velet, third overall in the Vuelta a España. Tony Martin, one of the best time trialists in the world. You can see the line now of HTC High Road over on the left-hand side. If Thomas Vokler were to look over his shoulder, he would now feel be able to see the front end of the peloton. He's seen them, but he won't give up. He's just go going again here, and that was a little bit of a bunny hop by the man behind on the motorbike there. Lost his drinking bottle. That's rolled safely off the course, thankfully as the two leaders, he keeps on looking over his shoulder now, Thomas Voigtlep, but it's still a gap and he won't give up with a gap like that. We're looking for four kilometers to go. There we now see the exposed roads as we head up towards the finish at Cap Friel. Suddenly we'll dive into the sand dunes, we'll duck and dive quite literally because in the far distance you can see the lighthouse, the finish is to the right of that picture in the dunes and look how the road kicks as we go towards them. A big sweeper now, they're onto the coast and they're still getting battered by the wind. Vacon Soleil trying to move themselves to the front end. You can see the wind battering those flags there just behind the riders. Buckler, quick glimpse over his shoulder, says, now, come on, boys, you want it? You've got to come to get me. Moving up, Velitz, followed by Tony Martin. Cavendish is not too far away. There's Matthew Goss in third position, but look at the battle behind. Inside, four kilometres to go. Take your hat off to the strength of these two men. The whole pack is throwing everything at them, and they won't give up. But there's a big sigh of in. I think uh, that was the surrender there. He took a deep breath. Well, Phil, this is uh, three and a half kilometres to go, and uh, driving in this morning, this is a slight ramp, a slight uphill. And when you've been battering for 20 kilometres, that little climb out of Freyel feels like a mountain. It's got to, and Velic also has uh, eased up on the front there as he slides away. Largely responsible for bringing these boys back to hill on the HTC high road. Now, who's going to be the next boy to make a move here? Surely they won't go straight to the line without somebody trying to spin off the front. It's quite clear that Team Sky are in the mix today, and they'll be looking for Edward Boyce and Hagen their man from Norway to try and lead out Ben Swift 
who's riding his first Tour de France, and it could be a finish. He never gives up, does he? He's going to have another go. You can have Jeremy War, but I'm staying out here. He has got a heart of gold and a courage of steel as Thomas Volker. He sees this as the last chance. This is that horrible little ramp at about three kilometres to go. He's got himself about 50 metres advantage. It's actually back on Soleil come to the front now. They've got a very good sprint to the Frenchman, Romain Felu, although he's not very friendly with Mark Cavendish currently. Cavendish has dubbed him a kamikaze rider. Well, that's the ramp approaching the finish, in fact, that Chris Borman, the great British cyclist who has ridden in yellow in the Tour de France, said that anybody with the strength could actually fool the sprinters on that ramp and get away for the goal finish. I just noticed, in fact, we mentioned Roman Felu, Phil. He's actually locked on the wheel of Mark Cavendish. Now, that could be a little bit of fun. Well, there's going to be a lot of fun if they do sweep up Thomas Voigtler, but he's never going to give up. They'll have to race all the way to his back wheel. This is uh, Jeremy Roy now. His effort was made. He's out the back. A lot of riders, you noted there, have given up now. They've uh, just dropped off the back. They'll ride the last two kilometres in alone. They're leaving this to the sprinters now. Right, it's HTC High Road in control. The Vacancelé have swung over. They're leaving Romo Felu up to his own devices to follow the wheel of Mark Cavendish this afternoon. Everybody now trying to get themselves organised. There's a number of riders to the left-hand side of uh, Garmin Savella. I've noticed the yellow jersey of Tor Hussoft is not very far away. I wonder if again today he will be making the sacrifice in the lead-out for his teammate Tyler Farah, the American. It's all over inside two kilometres to go for Thomas Voigtler as the Lamprey team take over looking for Ali Jet, Alessandro Pataki. They're now moving up the yellow jersey of Tor Hushoff. The green jersey of Rojas is on the right. Well positioned here. We've also got Tyler Farah in the mix here. Bottle has gone wild in the centre of the pack. Fourth position in that line on the uh, luminescent bicycle that is, Ma is, is uh, Alessandro Pataki. Nicely locked into the wheel of the HTC train. They've got themselves going now. They really are picking up some speed. The next banner they'll see, there it is. 1,000 metres to go, and it's Alessandro Pataki's team in control. 1,000 metres to go, and our motorbike could only just shake them off the back there because they were going so quickly, but Tor Hushoff is getting himself also into a perfect position here to finish it off for the yellow jersey. And just look at the acceleration here. The cut, and there's a move coming up on the inside. Well, it looks like the acceleration of Tony Martin. Uh, Matty Goss there let the gap go, and then all of a sudden it puts a pressure on everybody else to try and close this down. Cavendish is a long way out. But Big this acceleration. Move, this, this could be the move of Ben Swift here, ripping away from the field. They were trying to organize themselves because this is an uphill finish all of the way as they race to the line here. They're slowly being hauled back. The gritting of the teeth of the Mayo Jean. Rocker is out of it in the green jersey. This is going to be a desperately close finish at 300 metres to go. Even Philippe Gilbert on the left is getting it. Now the yellow jersey of Tor Hushoff is slowly but surely. Hushoff is getting on turn here now. Sandy Kassar is trying to get into the middle and the race is off to the left of our picture as Cavendish comes. This is it. The missile has locked on to Philippe Gilbert. Has he got it on the line? Has he got it? The missile from the Isle of Man has got his first win of the 2011 Tour de France. Phil, I told you he had the legs here this afternoon. He was a long way down. He lost the lead out train, but he stayed calm until the last possible moment. He watched them. He knew you had to wait. Great ride by Philippe Gilbert to come up there into second place and uh, JJ Rojas getting third. I think uh, we'll have a look at this one more time. Look at the face of determination there. There's a great finish by Gilbert in the middle. Hussoft over on the right-hand side. Cavendish wants this. You can see by the expression on his face. Not an ideal kind of finish for Mark Cavendish, but when you're a sprinter, when you're a winner, you give it all. Well, that's it again. The doubters were out when he wasn't winning everything he did. He said, hey, remember last year they said the same thing, and then I won five. Well, he's opened his account today with a terrific, gritty win.